I'd like to tell you a ma'aseh that happened in Poland around 300 years ago. There was an epidemic that was going around and it only affected the Yehudim. Something very strange. It only affected the Yehudim. And the rabbi of the town wanted to know which one amongst us has aberot to cause this epidemic to come. It was a real magifah, magifah, mahala. So they said, we'll go around to everybody in the Beit Knesset and we'll ask him if he's doing any aberot, beseter, begalui, what he's doing exactly, what his actions are. So everybody came off clean. But they noticed that there's one person in the town that does not come to shul. And they said, for sure, the mahala, the magifah, the epidemic is because of him. So they said, let's go to his house and see what he's doing. How come he's not coming to shul? If he's not coming to shul, for sure he's doing something. He's up to no good. So they go to his house in the middle of the night. They see him from the window. He lights a candle in his house. He opens the door. He goes. He sits in the forest with two chairs next to him. He's on one chair, and they see somebody else on the other chair. So what is this guy doing? That's one night. The second night, the same thing. Third night, fourth night. It's going on and on. They see him. He's going to the forest. He has a candle. He sits over there with two chairs, and he's talking to somebody. Okay. They waited until he came back home in the middle of the night. The rabbi said, okay, now we caught you right-handed. What are you doing? Number one, you don't go to shul. Number two, what are you doing in the yard, in the forest? Who are you talking to? For sure the epidemic came because of you. He said, look, I can tell you one thing. I don't come to shul for a specific reason which I can't tell you. But if you really want to know, tomorrow morning I'll come and I'll let you know why I don't come to your shul. Okay? The rabbi is waiting, everybody's waiting. They start at Korbanot. All of a sudden this guy comes in with tefillin on his head. Everybody saw that tefillin, he ta'alfu. They, uh, how do you say? they fainted, thank you. They fainted. So when they came through, when they came to it, they asked the guy, you know, what's so special about you? What's so special about you? We fainted when we first saw you. He said, nothing special. I wear tefillin. He said, hey, we all wear tefillin. When we, tef- when we wear tefillin, nobody faints when they see us. He says, that's your problem. It says in the tefillin, when a person, Yehudi or Goy, sees a Yehudi wearing tefillin, he should faint from the fear that is on the Yehudi's face. So this person tells them, the reason why nobody faints when they see your tefillin is because you talk in a Bet Knesset. And that's the reason why I don't want to come to this Bet Knesset. Because if I come to this Bet Knesset and everybody talks, I will lose the power of my tefillin. They say, but who is this person with you in the forest? He says, that's Yirmiyahu and Nabi. That's the prophet Jeremiah. Which he was when the first Bet HaMikdash was destroyed. And every night me and him go to the forest. We cry not only for the Bet HaMikdash that was destroyed. We cry for the problem that everybody comes to shul and all they do in the shul is talk. I want to-